Tom Malone, uh, uh, is it possible we can crowdsource our way to a solution? Yes or no? We've been hearing a lot of depressing things all day about climate change. Uh, I suspect most people in this room would agree that climate change is one of the most important problems we humans face today. It's certainly a really big, hard, complicated problem. It's a problem that's affected by all of our actions and that can potentially affect all of us. I suspect most people would also agree that the top-down approaches that we've been using to deal with this problem so far haven't really been working very well. So those are all reasons for pessimism. But I think there are also some reasons for optimism. That is, we now have a way of solving really big, hard, complicated problems that wasn't possible even 15 years ago. As examples like Wikipedia and Google and Linux show, it's now possible to harness the collective intelligence of thousands of people all over the world to work on big problems at a scale and with a degree of collaboration that was never possible before. So our goal in the project I want to talk to you about is to harness this crowdsourcing approach and apply it to the problem of figuring out what to do about climate change. To do that, we've created an online platform called the Climate CoLab, and a community of over 10,000 people all over the world using this platform. The community includes some of the world's leading experts on climate science and policy and related issues. It also includes teachers, students, business people, NGO members, people all over the world from all walks of life. And together, these people are creating and evaluating proposals for what to do about global climate change. So the proposals can include any kind of changes people want to suggest, economic, political, technological, legal, any kind of changes they want. And to be sure these proposals are grounded in the actual physical and economic reality we face, all the proposals at the global level need to include some quantitative assumptions about the emission reductions that would result from the actions proposed. Then those assumptions are inputs to a set of computer simulation models built into the online platform designed by John Sturman, who will speak in just a moment, and a number of others. These computer simulations project the likely impacts of the proposed actions on things like temperature change, sea level rise, and various kinds of costs. Now, the main way we've organized activity in this online community is through a series of annual contests. In the two previous years of annual contests, the winners presented their ideas in briefings at the United Nations in New York and the US Congress in Washington, DC. The winners in this year's contests presented their ideas and uh, discussed them with experts, potential implementers, and others in a meeting we had here at MIT earlier this month. Now, in the previous contests, we had people developing proposals for what to do about the whole problem of climate change. But in this year's contests, we've begun to break the problem down into a number of more specialized sub-problems. So we have a community of over 100 volunteers, including experts and others, who are managing a set this year of 18 contests on more specialized topics, on things like how to generate electric power with fewer emissions, how cities can deal with rising sea level, and what kinds of social actions we can take to change cultural attitudes about climate change. Now, uh, we had one grand prize winner across all these 18 contests. I want to show you a video from the people who created that grand prize proposal. It was a, a university research group from Canada with a proposal about using aerial photography of infrared photography to help people reduce the amount of heat wasted from their homes and other buildings. Here's their video. My name is Dr. Jeff Hay. I'm a geographic information scientist from the University of Calgary, Department of Geography, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And this is my research team. 
The solution we propose is HEAT, Heat Energy Assessment Technologies, a free geo web service designed to visualize the amount, location, and cost of invisible waste heat leaving your home, communities, and cities as easily as clicking on your house in Google Maps. So that was one winner. Uh, another one that in some ways I like even better was the honorable mention winner. This was a proposal from an NGO in China that proposes what they call the China Dream. This is an aspirational lifestyle for the Chinese population that would be much more sustainable than the lifestyle of the American dream. Here's an excerpt from their video. Hi, hi, my name is Peggy Liu, MIT Course 6. And six years ago, I founded JUICE to accelerate the greening of China. Three years ago, JUICE started the China Dream Initiative to reimagine prosperity, reframe sustainability, and reshape consumerism. To help 1.3 billion Chinese see what a beautiful dream we can dream. And this is what we call He Yue Mengxiang, a happy and harmonious dream. A new China dream has captured our imagination across the country. Now, to succeed in making the new China dream a reality, we must show the dream in action, share the dream through trusted communities, seed it in media and ad campaigns, and we must change the social norms of what the heart of prosperity means. Here's some of the other winners at our conference at MIT earlier this month. Uh, they included a computer programmer from North Carolina with a proposal about fusion power, an American expat living in Nicaragua with a proposal about reforestation, and an ex-World Bank expert with a proposal about crowdfunding for renewable energy projects in the developing world. But one of my most favorite projects is one from a nonprofit organization in India that suggests that sometimes simple technologies like foot powered treadle pumps for irrigation may be better than more advanced technologies like hydraulic pumps. Here's an excerpt from their video. Hello everyone, International Development Enterprises India, IDEI, is a not-for-profit organization committed to working with smallholder farmers in India by promoting sustainable irrigation technologies. IDEI is promoting Treadle Pump, a foot-operated water lifting device that is used for irrigation by smallholder farmers. Each Treadle Pump prevents half a ton carbon dioxide emission annually as it replaces diesel use. I'm pleased to share with you the success story of one of our user farmers who has switched from using a higher diesel pump to Treadle Pump. Today, we will meet Budhiram and his seven-member family. Budhiram says that his half-hectare land was in a sad state. This was something he and his family accepted like a bitter pill. He borrowed money to hire a diesel pump to irrigate his land. This was his big hope and a lot of things were riding on its turning successful. But each step with diesel meant money down the drain. Was reluctantly attending a meeting payoff. In the farmer meeting he attended with a lot of reluctance that turned his life around, he says. As he peddled, he saw that a green cover was slowly creeping in. In the open market, it fetched a good price. So, just because you have a bunch of interesting ideas for pieces of the problem, still doesn't mean you have a solution to the whole problem. So what we want to do in the coming year is have another set of contests where people will develop proposals that integrate ideas from all these different areas into overall proposals for what to do at the national and global level. So in the long run, we hope the Climate Collab will help bring together scientists, policymakers, business people, and many others to develop and gain support for plans for better climate actions than anything we would ever otherwise have done. Thank you. <laughs>